What's up everybody? Hope everybody is doing good. I'm doing a video today. I'm going to give you a tank update, but I wanted to show off this Aquatic Life RODI system. It's really nice and it's twist in. If you're going to have a reef tank, you got to have a good RODI system. And this right here is going to take care of my water quality. It's going to get anything that the city water can't get out. And it's going to save me, most importantly, time and energy from lugging around buckets of water from the vehicle to the fish store or to one of those water mills that, that they have at the gas stations or whatever because it's going to be right here at my house and I can make my own water and all I have to do is turn the water valve on when I'm ready to go and that's it. Which is really important because having a big tank you have big water changes and big auto top-offs. And just the water changes alone, uh, 25 gallons plus a month, uh, that's a lot of water. Then also account, keeping in account my auto top off, I run through 20 gallons of water every two weeks. Uh, and the water that you top off with is, of course, RLDI water. Uh, I have the dual DI um, stages right here. And then I also got a cool little meter and uh, the meter is going to read the N side before it hits the DI. And then once it hits the outside of the DI, which is always going to make you hit zero TDS or total dissolved solid. So this is a really nice compact RLDI system. Now what I'm thinking about doing with this RLDI is running it straight to my auto top off uh, reservoir. That way when uh, my 20 gallon auto top off reservoir is close to empty, I'll just go ahead and flick a switch and then, you know, it'll go ahead and fill up. It'll fill up by itself with a float valve. Uh, without a float valve, there's a risk of having your auto top off or your RLDI just spilling over. And you don't want to spill over RLDI water because it takes about five gallons to make one gallon of RODI water. My wastewater though, I'll be running my wastewater from the RODI, not into the sink, but into a container or something like that where I can use that water to go ahead and water the yard, water some trees, repurpose that water for something else, you know? That way, you know, I'm using all my water and not just wasting it down the drain. So if you don't have an RODI system, highly recommend the Aquatic Life RODI Reverse Osmosis Deionization System. Uh, they have great customer service, and the I had this system for a while. I just haven't set it up yet, and the reason why is because I misplaced a blue clip. I reached out to Aquatic Life. I talked to Mike from customer service, helped me out a lot, and he ended up sending me several blue clips. Right, and I only needed one blue clip. So he, the fact that he took care of me, no questions asked. I'm really appreciative of that, and I'm gonna go ahead and get this RODI set up. We'll continue that in a different video. But as you can see, I only asked for one, and uh, I got like five blue clips. So that's really cool. Now let's get into the 180 update. It's not always gonna be pretty here. As you can see, the water is super cloudy. That's because I've been doing work. What kind of work have I been doing? I've been doing some fragging. I've been doing some uh, hitting up that Aptasia with that calc washer paste. That's why some of this rock it looks really white. I got water drops all over the glass. I did some rearranging of the rock because I was trying to uh, set it back the same way. Um, but I couldn't. It always happens. You do a little modification or whatever. And... Uh, Things just don't go back the way it was um, with the rock though you can see that I was able to get some of those daisy polyps most of them and just frag them off actually I didn't even frag them off I used a wire brush to them outside and I just started going to town on them uh, trying to take them off the rock uh, probably in a couple of weeks you're gonna see more of the daisy polyps coming back um, you can see I fragged up quite a bit of things, different zoas, mainly what I frag up anyways. Um, and we're going to get those into the 20-gallon tank.
But for now, I just move them at out of the space of the wave makers, so that way that the polyps don't fly off. And that's the best way to frag, anyways. And the reason why it's the best way to frag like that is because if you pit them off to the side, your polyps aren't going to be hit with the flow, and it allows your super glue to cure. Um, another thing right here is my anemone has been touching this uh, a can. I have some green and purple a cans that were doing really, really good. They're growing really well, but uh, it just got destroyed by this anemone. You can see the Hollywood Stunner really didn't get too much damage, but it did after time. And my a cans right here got destroyed. I, they were full. You can see the skeleton right there. There's a little bit of it still left, and I just didn't take it down. I said, you know, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll take care of it, and I never did it, and I lost quite a bit of it, but since I was doing some tank maintenance, I went ahead, took advantage of the uh, maintenance, and decided I was going to pull that A-can colony off, which is more not like a frag now. Downstairs in the sump, since I was messing around there, I put a filter sock on there, Hopefully it will clean up the tank and clear it up, but I'm not always going to have my tank nice and clean. So that's why I show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. Santa Monica Filtration Skimmer, doing really good. You can see all that crap on there. I need to go ahead and clean it out and uh, get that done. So I'll be good. And I also need to empty out my skimmer head, clean it out so that way um, it doesn't stink. Let's go ahead and put the top back on and move back up to the top. I got a bunch of uh, zoas here growing out like crazy. Um, I guess that's what happens when you leave things alone. Um, I really haven't been messing around with it. I don't move my corals around too much. Just set up on those discs and leave them alone and just, you know, watch them day to day. Uh, looking back at the videos, though, from one video to the next, you can see a lot of coral growth right there in my Sunny D's. I need to go ahead and frag some of those. I have somebody asking me for them that's local. And uh, I'm going to see if I can get a few heads of that frag and move some into the 20 gallon frag tank now. Uh, the last video I did, I broke down my 20, well, I broke down my 40 gallon and moved everything over to the 20 gallon. And uh, I'm liking it a lot better, which I'll give you guys an update on that. I cleaned up a lot of corals and uh, going from there. One thing that I've noticed is I don't have so many big turbo snails around. I need to stop by the LFS. Actually, I'm going to use that as an excuse to the wife so I can stop by the LFS and pick up some snails. A little bit of top-down action, which is my favorite. The uh, T5s have just turned off. I even like it better when the T5s are on and the LEDs. It just looks cooler when I'm up there doing maintenance and fragging. Um, my tank height is actually pretty tall. It's uh, about over past head level. It's not like you're bending down because this tank is up high on my stand the way I like it. But it is nice getting these top down views. I have to get a freaking ladder, climb up it to be able to reach into my tank or frag and do things like that for maintenance. So can't really tell, but. The top downs, they're awesome because you can see the green Montiporas, you know, this frog spawns, all the zoas, how they're growing, how much they spread. And uh, that Xenia in the next video, you will not see most of that Xenia. I will get it and I'll chop it up and it'll just come back fierce like if nothing. Um, so be careful about where you place your corals. Um, the torches really haven't been keeping it in check at all. They just keep growing. But I'm going to go ahead and cut this video short, guys. Hope you have a good one. Like and subscribe. Doesn't cost you anything. And you guys have a good one, man. Laters.